Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a very low cost mini PC from GMK Tech. This is their Nuckbox G3. It's powered with an Intel N100 processor. It does great with Windows, and it's got a Windows 11 Pro license as part of the deal here. Now, I do want to let you know that GMK Tech provided the mini PC to the channel free of charge. However, they are not providing any additional compensation, nor have they reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this mini PC is all about. Now, as I mentioned, this is very reasonably priced. In fact, you can get one of these for about $140 on Amazon, provided you click on the little coupon button when you're checking out. And that is for a model with eight gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD. This particular model that we got in for review has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD on board. You can very easily pull the top off to do some upgrades. Like other N100 mini PCs, this is only a single channel memory device, although the performance I found is actually very good for a single channel. It is running with DDR4 and not DDR5 RAM, but it is an inexpensive device, so I'm not gonna knock them too heavily on that. Over here, you've got your full-size NVMe slot. Very easy to swap storage out. You also have a smaller one here. I think this is a 2242 size NVMe. So you could add a second drive for additional storage or do a dual boot configuration or something like that. Uh, the case here doesn't feel all that spectacular. It is plastic, but I don't think for this price point we're going to expect a great quality build. But it does look pretty nice, and I found it to... Uh, work well for heat dissipation, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Got your power button here. You've got two USB 3 ports on the front. These are five gigabit per second ports. On the back, you can get dual 4K 60 output out of the two HDMI ports on here. You have two additional USB 3 ports. You have 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Of note, the Ethernet on board is Intel Ethernet, so compatibility with Linux is very good on this. We'll do a, a test of that Ethernet in a minute. Your power goes in here, and you've got a headphone microphone jack here along with a Kensington lock slot. What is missing is a USB Type-C port, so this is a little bit limited, but again, due to the price point, I am not going to complain all that much. Let me plug it in now, and we'll see how it performs. All right, so we've got Windows 11 booted up here. I was pleased to see when I got the PC up and running that it wasn't bypassing the normal setup process like many of these mini PCs do. A lot of these have an 11 Pro license on board, but they require you to set up a local account and not link up your Microsoft one. This one went through the standard setup procedure and it appears to be fully activated. Uh, right before I started shooting here, I did run a test of its Wi-Fi 6 adapter that's on board. This is a Realtek 8852BE. It was able to sustain about half a gigabit up and down. A little under what I typically see from a good Wi-Fi 6 adapter, but adequate. And earlier, I ran a test of the Ethernet on my 2.5 gigabit network here. And as you can see, it performs as expected with that Intel NIC on board. So all in a very good performance out of this for networking. Why don't we boot up the web browser now and take a look at a few basic tasks and then we'll go from there. All right, let's pop open a web browser here and take a look at the nasa.gov homepage as we usually do to see how fast everything renders in. And I wanna note here that we are running this at 4K60 right now. So it's able to render in here very quickly. It's very usable. It doesn't feel all that sluggish at all. Um, so I think if you are uh, looking to do work on a high resolution display, this is going to work out pretty well, I think. It's a pretty zippy little mini PC here, and you can see how fast a YouTube video pops up as well. Looks like there's not much going on in this video here, but you get the idea. Now, I did load up a 4K 60 frames per second YouTube video a little bit earlier. We did have a couple of drop frames when it was getting started, but after that, it was smooth sailing with no additional drop frames. I like to use this uh, video off of my extras channel because it does have... Uh, some areas that tend to push these video decoders a bit and it was able to keep up just fine which is something these intel chips do very very well and on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test we got a score of 164 
that is pretty much in the margin of error with another mini PC we looked at from Minix with the same processor. And you can also see how it stacks up against an older Ryzen mini PC that we looked at a year or two ago. And keeping with some basic tasks here, let's take a look at Microsoft Word with my uh, example document here. And you can see how quickly everything loaded up and how fast it's able to reflow text here. So if you're looking to do basic work, this machine is going to do it well, even at 4K 60 and even with a second display attached. If you wanted to mount it in the back of your monitor, you could do that. They do have a Visa mount that comes in the box so you can get it out of the way. Now, when the machine is doing basic work, you're not going to hear its fan all that much. It does have a fan on board, but it's very, very quiet. And generally, if you're browsing the web or just using your word processor, it will largely be silent. But that fan will kick on when you're pushing it a little bit harder, and that would include doing some gaming. Let's see how it performed there. Now, to my surprise, I was able to get GTA 5 to run at a playable frame rate. This is at 720p at the lowest possible settings, and we were getting 30 frames per second most of the time. It did dip into the high 20s every once in a while, but by and large, it stayed at or above 30. And we were always impressed in the past when we could get one of these low-end Intel chips to load up this game, but now you can load it and actually play it. And I bet a lot of other games of this vintage might be uh, playable here as well. Now this will also do well for game streaming if you wanted to stream from a gaming service, but there are some games uh, that aren't that old that will play natively, which is pretty neat. Now if you're looking to do emulation, I found PS2 emulation to be quite nice here. This is uh, the game Burnout Revenge running on a PS2 emulator. We're getting uh, 60 frames per second most of the time, an occasional lag hit here or there, but generally uh, fully playable at full speed, which was awesome. So if you have uh, games from the uh, early 2000s and be before, you should be able to get a very good experience here if you were looking for a retro emulation box. So all in, a very good gaming experience and a better one than I anticipated. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 369. This is right in line with what we saw out of another N100 mini PC from Minix. That was that fanless one we looked at a few weeks ago. So all in performance here is pretty good. On the 3D Mark stress test, we got a passing grade of 98%. As I mentioned, there is a fan on board here, but you won't hear it all that often. And when it does come on, it's not all that loud. And it was nice to see that it's able to keep the chip running at a consistent performance level, even under heavy load, which is what that test tests for. And one last thing to check out here, and that is its Linux support. I booted up the most recent version of Ubuntu and all of the hardware was detected properly. That includes the video. I was able to get it to run at 4K 60. The uh, Wi-Fi and the audio and the Bluetooth were all picked up successfully along with the ethernet. So if you were looking to play around with server applications like a Plex server or some other Docker stuff that you might want to play with, this is a very affordable way to do it. It's priced comparable to what a fully decked out Raspberry Pi would cost you and you'll get much better performance out of it. And because you've got those dual NVMEs on board, you can have Windows on one drive and Linux on the other and have a nice, fun, experimental computer to mess around with for uh, playing with those server applications and other self-hosted things that you might want to play with. Now, one word of caution on these mini PCs, of course, is that these are kind of a buy at your own risk proposition. These companies are located overseas. You really can't get a lot of domestic support for them but at this price point, I think it's probably worth the risk. I also ran a number of virus and malware scanners on Windows to ensure that there wasn't anything nefarious on this machine. Everything came back clean. And again, the setup process was done the way I expected it to be on a legitimate copy of Windows. So all in a tremendous value here uh, from GMK Tech. That's gonna do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.